Hello, and welcome to another episode of our How To series. In this second episode of our Synology series, we'll take you through what you can do with the camera once you've added it to the NAS. This includes changing and adjusting the camera settings, as well as taking you through how to adjust the record settings of a camera. Again, we are using a MarSite camera for this demo, but as with our previous Synology video, any IP camera that is on with compliant will work in some shape or form with the Synology NAS, although certain manufacturer specific features will not be controllable from the surveillance station software. Now we can begin this how-to guide. We should point out that this guide will start at the point we got to at the end of the previous video with the surveillance station software installed and an IP camera added to the NAS. So with the IP camera window open, you should see a small red record symbol on the thumbnail of the camera you just added. This means the camera is recording to a volume on your NAS and if you click the drop down arrow on the right of the camera that is recording, you will see where on the NAS the camera is recording to. If this isn't the volume you want the camera recording to, then you can go to the top of the IP camera window and click the disable button which will temporarily disable the camera and stop it recording. With the camera disabled, you can either create another volume or select another one from the volumes you have already created. To create a new volume is slightly too complicated to explain here, but if you pause this video right here, you can follow our how-to guide on our forum by clicking the link in the description of this video and then come back and finish watching the video when you've created a new volume. Now, with a new volume created, you can edit where the camera records to by clicking the camera in the IP camera window and then click the edit button at the top of the window. A new window will open with a series of submenus that let you adjust different settings relating to the camera. We will get to the recording settings shortly, but first we will quickly talk you through the device settings. On this page, you will see the basic details of the camera, including IP address, password, port and camera name. The camera name can be edited from this page, but that is all we would edit from here, as changing anything else would stop the camera connecting to the surveillance station software. There are also two other tabs on this page. The first tab is video, which allows you to adjust the file format used by the camera to stream and record, as well as allowing you to adjust which stream is used with each stream profile and the settings of each stream. We advise setting up at least two custom streams, one that is high quality that can be used for live view and recordings, and a lower resolution stream that can be used for remote and mobile app streaming where using less bandwidth is important. Be aware though that the maximum number of streams you can have and the settings of each stream will vary between different models and brands. Also, if the camera is connected via OMVIF, it is likely you will be limited to only H.264 or MJPEG formats. Even if the camera you are recording to has the ability to use other formats like H.265, as the camera is not fully compatible with the Synology software. The second tab on this page is advanced. With the MarSite camera that we have connected, the only advanced settings we have are related to RTSP and RTP, but depending on the camera, there may be more or less advanced settings available on this page. The next submenu is recording settings. The first page it will bring up is the main recording settings, and the first setting is truncate video every bracket minutes. This setting allows you to set the length of each file when it is saved, and you can set it at a range of sizes from 5 minutes all the way up to 240 minutes but somewhere around 30 minutes is the best if you want to easily navigate through your footage. Next you have pre and post recording time. This is really only important if you are planning to record using motion detection, as these times are the amount of extra footage that will be captured before and after a motion is detected, allowing you to see what happens before and after the incident. After these settings you have two tickable options for how long your recordings are stored for in days, and also how much storage space in gigabytes can be used before the footage starts to overwrite. You can tick one, both or neither if you want the camera to just keep recording until the volume is completely full and then start overwriting. Below these tick boxes is a button labelled estimate required space. If you save now with the edits you have made to the streams and to how they will be recorded and then click the estimate button it will calculate how much hard drive space you would need to record what you want. This is slow though so we would advise using the calculator on our blog, the link is in the description below. In this demo, our camera is a 3 megapixel camera recording at 15 frames per second for 30 days using the H.264 file format, so the amount of space required is around 1.6 terabyte. If this is too much or too little, you can go back and adjust the settings and then recalculate the storage. The second part of this page is labelled Recording Archives, and this section lets you set the folder name and file name prefix for the recorded footage, and also lets you select the volume you'll use to store the camera's footage. The other three tabs on this page are less important right now, so we'll just quickly skim across them. Profile is the tab that lets you choose which stream profiles, high quality, balanced or low bandwidth, are used for each recording type. 
The tab also lets you enable advanced settings for continuous recording. These settings allow you to set a lower quality stream to change to a higher quality stream when motion or other events are detected. The third tab is Schedule. This tab simply lets you define how the camera records and when it records. It also lets you create custom setting presets that can combine multiple types of detections into one preset. The final tab is the Advanced tab. This tab starts with a couple of tick boxes to disable recording for the camera if you only want to live view the camera, and a second tick box to mute audio recording. The second part of this advanced page is a drop down to select what should happen when the volume is full or the storage limit of days or gigabytes set by you is reached. The camera can either start deleting and overwriting the oldest footage or the camera can stop recording altogether. We suggest just leaving the camera to overwrite the oldest footage. The final part of the advanced recording settings is the external digital input. When enabled, this allows you to connect external alarm and motion devices to the NAS device to act as event triggers for the camera to record when something sets them off, but this can only be enabled if you have an input-output module on your network or an alarm device connected directly to the camera. The next sub-menu is the Live View settings. This menu allows you to set the quality of the stream you get in Live View and via the mobile app. We advise leaving the video source as from surveillance station and only change it if you know how to port forward your cameras. We would also advise setting the live view stream settings at high quality and the mobile stream at balanced or low bandwidth as the live view stream is mainly used when you access via a browser on the same network as your NAS so the bandwidth can be higher than the mobile which has to stream over the internet and must use less bandwidth. The live view settings also have the same advanced feature as the recording settings that allows the live stream quality to improve when motion or an event is detected. As this is for the live view, it is only really useful if you have someone monitoring the live feeds 24-7 like a security guard at a shopping centre or office building. The advanced tab of the live view settings isn't really that important for small scale IP camera systems, but if things like multicast interest you or they are a requirement of your system, then we can give you one-to-one -one advice or point you in the direction of someone who can help you. The final sub-menu is optimization. The settings in the optimization menu will vary between cameras and brands. In some cases, like with our Marsite example, most if not all of the settings will be greyed out. Don't worry though if any of these optimization features are required for your setup, as you can still log into the camera individually using the browser and change settings like video orientation, image exposure and on-screen display settings. The advanced tab should work with most cameras though as it allows you to set up a forced restart for the camera. This setting is only really needed for cheap IP cameras where they sometimes lose their connection to the NAS when they have been running for several days, but this isn't really required for the professional brands that we sell like Hikevision, Milesite, WiseNet and more. That's all the camera and recording settings covered. You can now click save and then close the settings window and click enable to start the camera recording. There are multiple ways to play back the footage from your cameras. We will cover these options for playback and live view in our forum post at a later date. Thank you for watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please do by clicking the Use IP logo. Check the description below for links to our webshop, Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus feeds. If you want more videos like this, click the playlist on screen now. Thanks again for watching, and see you in the next video.